United States Army pays me $3,067 every month. That equates to about $36,804 each year. To many of you, that may sound like a little. To some of you, that may sound a lot. But, and especially if you're young and watching this, the important thing about money is it's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep. And at the time of this video right now, there's a bunch of layoffs happening. We're supposedly in a recession. Inflation is at an all time high. Some of you might have even gotten laid off and now you're considering the military and you wanna know the financial aspects of the military. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys how much the army pays me and also takes away from me. Your boy's actually not doing bad for himself. The average is 34,684 hundred dollars a month or a year and i'm making 36 that's low-key not bad at all now before i tell you guys how much gets taken out of my paycheck each month i have to explain to you how the military pays us in the first place so pretty much the military pays us on a pay grade scale so the more higher up you are in the scale the more you get paid in addition to the pay grade the amount of time and service that you have in the military also gets added into that equation as well so the more time you serve and the higher up you are on a pay grade you get paid more so since i'm a specialist or e4 in a pay grade with over three years of service in the military i'm gonna get paid more than an e4 who has less than three years in the service in addition to that there's a bunch of bonuses in the military whether you're airborne you have kids you are married there's a whole plethora of bonuses that you guys can look up because this is all public information because in this video i'm just going to talk about my situation the military also pays you a salary and if you don't know the difference there's hourly and then there's salary and hourly you work for the amount of hours that you actually get paid for salary you agree to the amount that you get paid each year working at six flags before the army i prefer the salary because sometimes six flags wouldn't give me the amount of hours that i wanted so you know i couldn't buy the things that i wanted to buy whereas the army you know you get paid that number that they tell you by the end of the year so it's pretty nice so when 19 happened your boy was still getting paid whereas my friends in the civilian sector we were all in quarantine they weren't getting paid but the downside to that is in the army you're going to be working 24-hour shifts you are a soldier 24 7. sometimes you guys are working sometimes you guys are not so if you guys are in a field up you know up at 5 a.m to freaking 5 a.m again but like i also said earlier there's also some times where you're really not doing that much and you're just chilling collecting a paycheck all right so let's break down how much i make and how much gets taken away each pay period you guys are going to get a leave and earning statement and that pretty much lays out your entitlements and your deductions how much you're getting paid and how much is getting taken out of your paycheck before you actually get it for the month of november of 2022 my base pay was two thousand six hundred and fifty two dollars and that's basically what i was saying before since i'm an e4 the base pay is that number right there so i have you know i have all the numbers up right here or something like that next up is my bas which is four hundred and six dollars and ninety eight cents which stands for basic allowance for sustenance or food so if you're a single soldier living in a barracks you're most likely not going to get this unless you work a job that conflicts with the defect times but if you don't work a job like that you're expected to go to the defect for breakfast lunch and dinner and so yeah if you guys are working a job that conflicts with the defect time and you're not getting bs definitely talk to your chain of command because you should because you're missing meals that you essentially pay for because your bas gets taken away from you next up is bah i get paid eight dollars and ten cents which is basic allowance for housing and so if i were to be married and living off the military base the military would pay my rent and that's basically how much they would give me but since i live in a barracks they're paying for like my toilet paper or whatever and based off of the location that you're in it's higher or lower based off where you're located at so everything added together comes out to three thousand sixty seven dollars and eight cents now let's see how much they deduct away from it. i'm going to explain later on in the video but some of these deductions you guys can actually control and you can set them to be higher or lower but my first deduction was federal taxes which was $241.65. I'm pretty sure everybody has to pay these. Next up is Social Security, which is $164.42. After that is Medicare, which is $38.45. All of these I cannot control to my knowledge. Next up is SGLI, which is my life insurance, is $7. And pretty much this is one of the ones that you can control. If you guys set it to higher, like the max is $400,000, you're gonna obviously pay more. If you set it to like zero, you're obviously gonna have zero dollars taken away. Since I'm in like a non-hazardous MOS, like on paper, right, anything can happen. I set mine to $100,000, so it's not, you know, if I died, my family could at least pay for my funeral 
and like pay some bills or whatever also i want you guys to actually read the policy because you know there's loopholes that the insurance company can use to actually not pay your family and your family could get screwed next up is afrh which is retirement homes for veterans 50 cents gets taken out after that is my traditional tsp and tsp is basically like a 401k or retirement plan this is essentially up to you 132 after traditional there's roth tsp which is also 102 dollars and 60 cents this is another one where you can set how much or how little you want that gets taken out of your paycheck personally i put it to five percent each that gets taken out of my paycheck so i can get that match for retirement essentially i want to use my retirement plan as like an emergency backup plan because hopefully by the time i retire i do not need a million dollars and i have exceeded a million dollars by that point but just in case i don't I have you know a million dollars waiting for me you guys should be putting money into your retirement after that is my mid-month pay which is a thousand and a hundred and seventy five dollars and eighteen cents all those deductions come out to be a thousand eight hundred and ninety two dollars and forty cents on november 10th i got a deposit in navy federal of a thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars and eighteen cents that's that mid-month pay you see and also the deposit hit navy federal on october 28th of $1,174.68. There's a bunch of banks you guys can choose from, but I personally like Navy Federal. They pay you earlier than the 1st and the 15th, and also they have physical brick and mortar locations during military bases that you can physically walk into, and if you wanna to talk to the manager and be a little caring, you feel me, you could do that. Because I used to have USAA, and it was all through the telephone and stuff like that. I didn't really like that, cause like, what if i wanted to deposit money like you really it's hard to do that when there's no like physical like i don't know just i like navy federal on top of that my health insurance is covered my vision is covered my dental care is covered i'm not saying it's top-notch coverage but like i'm still alive i got four legs you feel me when healthcare in america is freaking outrageous personally i think there should be a whole revamp of the whole healthcare system in america but until then you just got to work with what you got also on top of that the army offers up to four thousand dollars in tuition assistance each fiscal year which i'm currently using to attend my college for cyber security and information insurance which is kind of like an 80k job minimum so like damn near i don't even know how you can evaluate that like my potential income is like you know whew. so after i receive my paycheck the military and the government got their fair share out. I have $2,350.58 left to spend on whatever because I don't have to pay rent. My food is covered. At this point, this essentially falls on your lifestyle and if you're a lavish person who's a big spender, you're gonna you know, spend it on whatever. Like this is the amount of money that I have to be able to spend on whatever and this is what i spend it on so first i'm going to say what my basic needs are like these are the needs that i absolutely must have each month right so the first one will be spotify premium bro because music when i'm in the gym i can't just you know be listening to ads when i'm working out i gotta have spotify premium that's essential spotify is better than apple music like bro put it down in the comments what do you prefer so spotify is ten dollars a month next up is t-mobile my phone bill because i have to have a phone and i paid for my phone in full so i just pay for the service which is 55 dollars a month next is gas for my car which is 80 dollars a month i don't drive a gas guzzling suv i used to but you know i got tired of paying premium only and that shit's expensive as hell now and i'm not trying to pay that so i got a cheaper car which you know means cheaper gas next up is car insurance for my car is 57 dollars and 76 cents every month for my military folks i found geico to be the cheapest some people say usaa i don't know shop around though do not get your first freaking estimate and go with that shop around but that's pretty much all the things that i considered a must have each month and that totals out to 202 dollars and 76 cents next i'm going to say all the things that you know i don't really need but i get anyway so my haircut i try to get my haircut at least twice a month so that totals out to 60 dollars each month and then investments your boy is an investor that comes out to be fifteen hundred dollars every month right now is the best time to be investing your money we are currently in a recession right now and everything's down if you look at the price of google and freaking amazon right now compared to their all-time highs bro why would you not buy that right now ethereum bitcoin polygonmatic you feel me get into that while it's low now so you come on now. at the end of all that i have 587 dollars and 82 cents 
to just spend on anything. So if I want to go out and buy food or buy some shoes, buy some new earbuds or whatever, I can do that. That's how much money I have. You might have noticed that I don't save any of my money. That's correct. I don't because I don't believe in saving money in the bank because you lose it due to inflation. I have an emergency fund and after that, I'm just going to invest all my money because inflation. So how does my budget compare to yours? Is the military a good financial decision for you? If you guys want to learn more about how I manage my money, I also made a video about how I survive in the military with this amount of money. If you guys want to check it out, check it out here. But other than that, peace.